What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're gonna be talking the five baits, rod reels, gear that I have set up for fall smallmouth bass fishing. Now, if this is your introduction to the channel, if this is the first time you've come over to the channel to see these videos, my name is Benjamin Nowak, and this is the Smallmouth Experience, the Smallmouth Bass Fishing Focus YouTube channel. So if you guys like smallmouth bass fishing, if you'd like to see some big fish being caught, please consider subscribing to the channel and growing this community because it would mean the world to me. I just want to say thank you guys for even watching the video, but if you want to subscribe, please consider to do so down there below by hitting that subscribe button. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking five smallmouth bass fishing fall lures to hopefully help you guys get prepared for the shallower water bite. This is the time of year I'm putting away those lighter lines, I'm putting away some of those spinning rods, and I'm picking up my bait casters, my heavier gear, you know, your 15, 20 pound tests, bait casting setups to be able to really hit these fish and get them moving to the boat. This is the time of year when those fish are feeding shallow, feeding up heavy, and getting ready to get fat for the winter time. As much as I hate to say winter, fall is one of my favorite times of year to catch giant smallmouth. They group up and you can catch a whole bunch of them on heavier line tactics. So the first bait that I wanna to talk to you guys about was probably one of my favorite fall baits, and that is a medium diving crankbait. So this is a Berkeley dredger 14.5 and uh, as you guys can tell i've been throwing it quite a bit the paint's pretty much worn off down here at the bottom from hook rash and from teeth marks and it's just caught me a ton of fish but i like a medium diving crankbait especially a smaller body medium diving crankbait because it gets down there where those fish are living i keep it up off the bottom and those fish are able to find this thing it looks like what they're feeding on and they absolutely smash it a crankbait is one of my favorite bites they try to take it away from you and a lot of times when they get on this bite, it can be fast and furious. You get them in the boat, unhook them, toss them back, you make another cast and you can catch another fish. Cause they're on that moving bait bite, you can catch a ton of fish really quickly. Now, some of my favorite baits to throw, some of my favorite crankbaits to throw, as I mentioned, are these smaller body crankbaits. I'm throwing those 12 to 17 foot diving crankbaits. This is a Berkeley Dredger 14.5. I have it on 14 pound test line. So it's only getting down to about 10 and a half to 12 feet. So what that's going to do is keep that bait a little bit higher in the water column. If I'm fishing in over 12 foot of water and it only gets down to 10 and a half foot, it's going to be up off the bottom where those fish can see it, track it. They're going to come up, find that thing and smash it. A lot of times I like to keep my bait over their heads. So having a medium diving crankbait on a little bit heavier pound test line, guarantees that I'm not gonna break off, keeps that bait up in the water column and gets a lot of extra bites for me. This is actually something Seth Fighter was doing last year on St. Clair with the DT-10, keeping that bait above those fish's heads. They were coming up and hitting it. So basically mid column reeling. It's one of my favorites, Berkeley Dredger 14.5. Another really good one is actually the Rapala DT-10. I've caught so many insane numbers of fish on this. Um, you can't tell, the paint's still holding up pretty well, but I've caught so many fish on this. The Demiki DC 300 is a really sneaky one. Again, just like that 14.5, it dives to about 14 and a half, 15 feet, but it has a really small body profile. This is important, we're talking smallmouth bass, not largemouth, so having a smaller body profile bait that dives to relatively the same depth is gonna get you more bites. You're also gonna land a lot more of those fish. They're gonna be able to get it in their mouth better. They're gonna be able to really smash that thing. And a lot of times it's gonna match the forage a little bit better, especially as we're up here in the north. And finally, the one that I caught my biggest fish on ever was a six cents 300 DD. So I have to put it in the lineup. And what I like about this, it has a single rattle knocker. And I think that's something that's just a little bit different. You can get some of those fish to trigger on this bait when things get really tough because it has a different sound, has a different profile, and it catches a lot of really big fish. So those are my favorite crankbaits for fall smallmouth fishing. Now the rod that I'm throwing this on is a tactical glass crankbait rod, which is coming out in October. I've had the chance to play around with it a lot, but it's a 7.4 glass composite crankbait rod. What that means is it's 60% carbon fiber and 40% glass. So you still get a lot of the feel that you would expect from your graphite cranking rods, but it has a little bit less backbone, a slower action. So that way those fish can eat that bait a little bit better when you're fishing something like a moving bait, like a crankbait, especially when you're reeling it in pretty quick. I like to fish a slower action rod. You want a big spool reel, a six, four to one or slower gear ratio reel. I like to kind of reel that bait slower through the water column. I think it helps those fish find it, key in on it, smash it, as opposed to like a seven, one to one, which will burn you out pretty quickly. And then I'm fishing it on 12 or 14 pound test line. I don't go much lower than 12, a lot of big fish. This is not the time of year to break off. And I really don't think that bigger line is gonna hurt you. So 12 or 14 pound test fluorocarbon line is my go-to with the medium diving crankbait. 
Bait number two is another approach that I catch a ton of fish on in the fall, and that is a swim bait. We're talking the soft plastic paddle tail style swim baits. And the reason I like this bait is again, your ability to fish it above those fish's heads. But unlike a crankbait, you can really control the depth you're fishing it at by either upsizing the head that you're throwing or by reeling it more slowly. So with a swim bait, you have a little bit more versatility than a crankbait and you can get these fish to trigger and a lot of them to trigger on this thing. It looks natural. Those fish are moving shallow. They're moving in the grass. They're moving around those river mouths where those bait fish are pushing up to go back into the rivers for the fall and winter. So using something that matches that profile really well, like a little finesse paddle tail style swim bait, like this three and a half right here, is something that you can get a lot of bites on. You'll see me as I move later into the year, switch to more of like your easy shiner style swim baits, those finesse style flat sided bodies. But early in the fall, what I'm gonna be throwing are your standard style paddle tail swim baits. Uh, has a little bit more body kick, a little bit more roll. That water temp is still gonna be in those 60 degree to upper 50 degree ranges. And those fish are gonna be active and aggressive. These baits just put off a little bit more vibration. They're easier for fish to find and you can get a lot of big bites. I'm typically fishing like your 3.3 to your four inch size paddle tail swim baits. And I don't get too crazy with the color. I'll fish a natural color like this bluegill color from Bass Magnet Lures or your Tennessee Shad from Kai Tech or IU. But when the water does get off colored, there's a couple tricks that I like to still do with this bait to get a couple extra bites. And that could either be putting an underspin on this, which is gonna have a blade underneath to help those fish find it, or fishing a chartreuse swim bait. This is a Bass Magnet Lures chartreuse swim bait. And the reason I like this is a couple years ago that water got off colored on me. They were on a swim bait bite really well. I knew they should still be eating it. So what I did instead of switching away from the swim bait was go to that chartreuse swim bait with an underspin and those fish would absolutely smash it. So going and changing the color can be a big proponent, but don't get too crazy. Don't get too dialed in and say, okay, they only want this specific color. If you have something similar, you can probably put it on and get a lot of bites. These fish are dumb, they're stupid, they're shallow, and they wanna eat. So using a little swim bait like this three and a half right here is gonna be perfect. This is where things are gonna get a little bit weird. I'm also throwing this on a cranking rod. This is your 7.4 graphite cranking rod. This is a tactical elite model. And I like a cranking rod when I'm fishing smallmouth on a swim bait because I'm fishing lighter wire hooks. If you're fishing like a medium heavy or a heavy rod and you set the hook on a regular wire, you risk bending that hook out or flexing it. And that's the way a lot of fish are gonna come off on a swim bait is bending or flexing that hook. So this is a 7.4 graphite cranking tactical elite rod. I'm fishing it on a six speed gear ratio bait cast reel with 14 pound test fluorocarbon line. Again, don't overthink it. Very simple swim bait setup. I just really like the cranking rod because it helps me keep these fish pinned on those lighter wire, more moderate wire hooks. This next one is one that I have caught a lot of big fish on already this year. It's a technique that I really like and want to, I guess, master over the course of the year, but it is a wobble head. So a wobblehead to me is essentially the ability to fish a soft plastic bait like a crankbait. Keep it on bottom, but give it hunting action, help it come through the rocks. It's gonna have a lot of movement in the body. So whatever trailer you put on there is gonna have a lot of movement. I'm fishing this on a Tactical Elite 756. It's a 7.5 heavy, but it's a moderate action. That moderate action is really important. You guys have heard me talk about it when I talk about wobbleheads. I lost a bunch of fish last year because I was fishing too fast of a rod. So those fish would eat it. I'd set the hook and I'd flex the hook. I'd bend the hook. Those fish would come and jump and they'd end up coming off. So using a moderate action lets that fish get it a little bit better. A lot of times when this bait's tracking down there, they don't necessarily, necessarily get it on the first bite. But when they do, having that moderate action is gonna keep that fish pinned, especially with like a three quarter or a one ounce head. The bait that I'm throwing on here is a Do It Molds Swim Shad, three and a half inch. This is a smaller profile, but it has that chicken foot style. So it moves a ton of water. It kicks a lot, even at really slow speeds. That's why I like this. Another really good bait is a toad style bait, like the Zoom Horny Toad or a Berkeley Power Buzz Buzzin' Toad. But having a toad style bait, again, is going to move a lot of water. It's gonna kick really easily at slow speeds. So you just want something that's gonna move water. I also like the Reaction Innovation Spicy Beaver, which has the double paddles. I threw that a lot last year. It has a thinner body so you get really good hook penetration. My most common size that I'm throwing is three quarters of an ounce. The reason I like that three quarter ounce is I can keep it on bottom. I can maintain bottom contact, which is absolutely critical with this thing. Maintain bottom contact, bounce it through that heavy stuff and wait for that fish to bite. When that fish bites, it can really set the hook, jack that fish, 
on this setup right here. I'm throwing it on a seven speed gear ratio reel. Your biggest thing is maintaining bottom contact. So I fish a lot like a jig where I just reel that handle really slow and as long as I can feel the rock, as long as I can feel the bottom, I'm doing it right. So seven speed gear ratio reel. You want something you can pick up line with when that fish does eat it so that way you can hit them really hard. And then 17 pound test fluorocarbon line. I like 17 pound tests because you're fishing it in the rocks, you're fishing it on bottom around that heavier cover. So 17 pound test gives me a little bit more confidence that these fish are gonna come in the boat when they bite that thing. This next one is the only spinning setup in the lineup. And this here is going to be my tube or my darter rod. Now I go to a, I go to a spinning setup for this cause I wanna be able to make a really long cast. And I like the ability to fish these on a spinning setup. You get a little bit better feel when you're maybe fishing a tube along the bottom and don't have that much feel. It also is a little bit more forgiving when you set the hook, you're gonna bend a little bit deeper in the rod even though it is a medium heavy. And I think that's gonna help you get better hook penetration. It's gonna manage that lighter line, that 10 pound test, eight pound test, fluorocarbon line a little bit better. So as I mentioned, the baits that I'm throwing are either a tube or a darter. Now this darter here is one that I actually poured do it molds darter. I really, really love this mold. It looks like a goby, looks like a little bait fish, looks like a crawfish kind of scooting along there on the bottom, and then a tube. A tube is such a small, small staple, and I know I got a lot of flack. People thinking I was gonna rip out a tube on my last video. A tube catches them. In the fall, when those fish are roaming those big rock flats, a tube flat out catches them. And if you want some tube colors, I would recommend something like this toad teaser, which is a green pumpkin, purple, and gold. Go with a watermelon and purple, and then go with a smoke purple, smoke black. That's really gonna cover all your bases, whether you're fishing really clear water, a little bit off color water, or dirtier water situations when you go with the darker base. But those are my three tube colors. Rod I'm throwing it on is a 7.3 medium heavy. I like the medium heavy because you're making a long cast, you're fishing a single jig hook, you wanna be able to get good hook penetration. But like I mentioned, that spinning reel is going to manage your lighter line a lot more effectively. So seven foot three, medium heavy. They call it a fast, it's a little bit softer rod, so it is more of a moderate fast action. And then I'm fishing a high speed gear ratio, bigger spooled spinning reel. Again, bigger spool, 3000 size, 30 size, because you want something that manages that line effectively and you can make long casts with. I also like the bigger spinning reel, and a lot of people skip over this because bigger spinning reels have better drag systems. You have more surface area on that spool, so when you set the hook, you're gonna get a lot better drag out of a bigger spinning reel than like your 2000 size. You're also not gonna manage the line as effectively and you're gonna have a lot more issues with line twist and wind knots. So your 30 or 40 size spinning reels are gonna be a lot more effective. Again, if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff down in the comment section, let me know. I'll respond to you guys and I'll get down there and I'll talk with you guys through kind of all of these setups. And now we're pulling out the big old machine gun. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking to yourself, okay, well, you already talked about swim baits. How does this differ? This bait here, this big seven wire A-rig is the absolute deal when you want to get your arm broken. It's great when fish are really grouped up, keyed in on bait fish, you can get a ton of bites and a lot of really big bites. This tends to catch really big fish. The problem with this technique, you do not want this to be the very first bait that you throw through an area. You don't want this to be a bait that you're throwing through an area when there's a big pod there and you just want to keep catching them. This big old seven wire rig or any rig that you're throwing is going to draw a lot of fish off of that area. They're going to chase this because even if you get a bite, you sell other baits acting correctly. So these fish are going to be pulled from the area. They're going to act really stupid and I have to fix this rig. I haven't really thrown it since the spring, but it's going to pull these fish off the area and you're going to basically break up that school. This is a seven wire frenzy baits rig. Now the way I have this thing rigged up, I have two dummies on top. What that means is these are screw locks with no hooks. Then I have a quarter ounce across the middle and then three eighths down at the bottom. They're all three and a half inch swim baits. They're a little bit smaller size swim baits, which I like on a, on a big rig like this, especially early in the fall. Another thing I wanna be trying is a more finesse style rig, which is when I'm gonna be going down to these 2.8 style swimmers. I'm gonna go to lighter heads, lighter rig, um, a little bit smaller, more compact profile. And that's something Dirds is gonna teach me so I don't have the ability to talk to you guys about that because I've never really done it. But I've caught a lot of big fish on this big old seven wire rig right here. The setup I'm using, this is a TFO swim bait rod. It's a 711 mag heavy and it's a moderate fast. What that means is there's gonna be a little bit more bend in this rod, which is important when you're fishing a heavy rig like this because you want to be able to lob that thing out there. It's gonna reduce the fatigue. It's gonna allow you to fish a lot more effectively because when they do bite, you can turn their head, 
get them moving to you. And uh, it's just a really good overall setup for throwing a rig. Then the reel that I'm throwing is a big old beefed up six four to one gear ratio bait casting setup with 20 pound test fluorocarbon line. I throw it on straight fluorocarbon. You're talking 20 pound test line. If you're smart about it, you check your line occasionally, you won't break it off. I've had this rig on here for like three years. But those are the top five baits and the gear that I'm gonna be using and throwing throughout the fall. And I don't want you guys to hate me for not adding in a jerk bait. That's something I'm gonna add in once that water temp hits, you know, your upper 50 degree range. A jerk bait can be fun. I lose a lot of fish on it and I just feel like it can be way more effective with the five baits that I talked about in this video right here. And all of the baits that I talked about in today's video are gonna be linked down in the description below. Go check those out. If you have any questions on the setups or the baits that I'm using, hit me up down there. I'll answer those questions. And as always, thank you guys for watching. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel, growing the community. And as always, take care to lines. God bless. See you next